equals two x squared minus one. Yeah, so the thing about this one is that you wind up having to take a half of something that's already been cut in half. So I'll just show you the trick for that. Mechanically, like it's not any different, it's just new. So uh, we are gonna do the pull out two. We're gonna leave our X squared. When you pull two out of negative five, he becomes negative five halves. And then I'm gonna leave a little extra space. So I haven't really done anything yet that's pretty too weird, I just divided by two, right? When you pull something out, you're really doing division. Factoring is always just meant division. Um, we good to hear? Sure. All right, so this is where the algorithm, the repetitive process kicks in. We, we're like robots. We should attack completing the square as if we were robots. We don't ask questions about it. We don't analyze it too much. You just instinctively, once you've gotten the junk off of x squared, you take half of this number. And what is half of negative 5 over 2? It is negative 5 over 4. And if no one's ever taught you this trick before, I'll teach it to you right now. To take half of something that's a fraction, you have two options. You may pick either of them. Option one, if it's convenient, is to take half of the top. But since that's not convenient because the top is odd, alternatively, you can double the bottom. To make a fraction half as big as it used to be, if you make the bottom twice as big as it used to be, you would understand then by definition that the fraction is now half as big, right? It's like if you cut a pizza that currently has four slices, or, right, and you cut it into eight slices, and you still eat five slices, you're eating half as much pizza, right? Do you agree? You sure? Let me repeat myself. To make a fraction half as big, make the bottom twice as big. Hmm? So I'm going to take half of negative five halves, which is negative five fourths, and I'm going to square it, still just following the algorithm. And I'm going to square the top and square the bottom. 5 squared is 25. 4 squared is 16. So I'm going to add 25 sixteenths in the landing zone there. Now, again, the algorithm won't fail me. You'll remember from when I taught you this that there's always this math problem to consider right here. The big fat purple arrow reveals the true identity of the red number. And so if you multiply those together, the number um, out here, here and the number in here what is 2 times 25 over 16 okay. it's either 50 over 16 if you're a late reducer or if you're an early reducer you can reduce the 2 and the 16 early and get 25 over 8 regardless of whether you're an early reducer then multiplier or a multiplier then reducer it comes out, whether you like it or not, to 25 over 8. Are we okay? So the net result of that big, long, fat, purple arrow is 20, that when I added 25 sixteenths, I was really only adding 25, or I was adding 25 over 8. So to offset that, I go to the back and I take away 25 over 8. It's really important that you advocate for yourself and speak up. Did I lose anyone there in the depths of the math stuff, the calculations? Which part of that? The purple arrow? No, the purple arrow makes sense. It's right. No, it's not. You sure? Anything I can, maybe I should be more specific. Does anyone have any concern that they'd be willing to voice that I could help with at this point? So when I did the, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Listen, when you do the long purple arrow, really what you're doing is you're doing two times. 25 over 16. You see that? So if you, like I said, you're, if you multiply fractions, you've decided by the time you're this old that you're in one of two categories. You're either an I like to reduce before I multiply person, or you're a ain't nobody got time for that. I'll reduce later kind of person. You, which one are you? You just multiply, throw caution to the wind and just reduce it later. I'm fine with that. So if I multiply straight across the top, two times 25 is 50. 1 times 16 is 16. But whether you like it or not, now you do have to reduce. And when you divide them both by 2, that's where the 25 eighths comes from. I simply early on took this 2 and this 16, and I just knocked them down to a 1 and an 8 so I wouldn't have to spot them later. You with me? Yep. Okay. So we good to proceed? 
So the rest of it, you probably, if you're, if you're good at following the process, do you understand now that you're done? Like you just need to write Y equals two times X blank squared. <laughs> and this is where it's really critically important that you look up in the top right corner of the television and you say right now, oh, so that's why he always writes down that number. Because remember, the number that is half of the thing before we square it is the number that will transfer into my factor. So after the X, I will put minus five fourths. And that again came from right there up in the corner. And it's minus 16 but it's minus 16 over eight and 16 divided by eight is two. So that's the final answer. So in keeping with the, this is kind of new to us theme. Well, here we go. The vertex, we're not used to this. The vertex is a, what we call a, a tweener. It's not really called that. I just call it that because I think it sounds rad. It just, it's between two grid lines. And so the vertex is actually at the point five fourths, negative two if i asked you to graph that like you could handle that how far to the right would you go that didn't go well okay so you'd go one and one fourth spaces to the right correct five fourths is one five over four is one full pack with one fourth left over right so I would go right one and then a fourth of the way to two, and then I would just go down my normal two. And then the axis of symmetry is the line whose name is X equals five fourths. We good? All right. So when you take half of something that's already a fraction, you can just double the bottom and presto, you just took half of a fraction, right? Okay, carry on. Back to work with you. 